Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I must confess that after hearing the morning and afternoon about various conversations related to UFOs and such controversial work, what I'm about to share with you may sound mundane in comparison, which is unusual for me. <laughs> um, the title of this research is The Effects of Distant Group Intention on the Growth of Seedlings. And it involves myself and Mark Bacuzzi and Limbic Taggart and Melinda Connor. And this particular research was actually funded by a, uh, a, a foundation associated with Canyon Ranch. And if it wasn't for their openness, this kind of work could never take place. The work is, uh, there have been many studies of distant, uh, both local and distant intentionality related to living systems. And they're reviewed in two recent books, as well as uh, uh, books by Dean Radin and um, Claude Swanson and so on. One is called The Energy Healing Experiments, which I wrote that summarized our research over the past 10 years. And the second is The Intention Experiment by Lynn McTaggart, which I suspect many of you have um, heard of. What's interesting, by the way, is that neither of these books use the word parapsychology, um, because we do see this as a, as a, although some of the phenomena may seem strange or anomalistic, um, this is something that apparently applies to all of us. Now, I will not be talking today about research that we've done both with local and distant intentionality on biophoton emission in plants using a supercooled um, uh, CCD camera system uh, cooled to minus 100 degrees centigrade. Um, although this work is really phenomenal, uh, it, it would take a, a whole presentation. And what I instead want to talk to you about is an application of distant intentionality to the growth of, of barley seeds. And part of the reason for selecting this preparation is because it's research that can be done by virtually anyone, including high school students, and it has obvious direct potential applications to the vitality of our planet, um, whereas biophoton emission is a bit esoteric for, for non-scientists. So the purpose was to determine whether distant group intention could affect the growth of barley seeds under blinded experimental conditions. That was the first purpose. Second was to determine whether there might be a, quote, spread of effect within a given experiment on the growth of barley seeds. And the reason is because uh, the seeds were closed fairly, uh, placed fairly close together, as you will see. And the question is, how specific could the intention be to the seeds that were targeted? And the third is to explore whether groups trained in focused attention and healing would have a greater and or more selective effect on the growth of barley seeds. Now, each experiment had 120 seeds in a blinded distant group intention session. By the way, that was also something that was, you could get m many more subjects per experiment if you worked with seeds than working with, for example, leaves or, or vegetables that took up a large space in a camera. And then we had 120 seeds in a matched control, which was a non-intention session. For each session, the uh, distant group intention and control, the seeds were divided into uh, four sets and of 30 seeds per group, which were simply labeled A, B, C, and D. And then one of the four sets was randomly selected as the intention targeted seed um, and of 30 seeds. The other three sets became the non-targeted controls for an end of 90 seeds. And the match control session used the same targeted and non-targeted control sets. Now the, the experimental part is as follows. This is basically a picture of the laboratory where the room where the research was run and you can see the pots and the computer and, and so on. What would happen is that we would select, research assistant would select 120 seeds, place them in four trays, A, B, C, and D, and he would gently uh, move them so they were more or less in alignment. Photographs would then be taken of A, B, C, and D, and then those four photographs would be emailed to Lynn McTaggart who happened to be at a meeting somewhere in the world where they would, the audience member would select randomly A, B, C, or D, and then one of these sets of images would therefore go up on the screen, and that would be the seeds for which the intention to grow would be sent for 10 to 15 minutes. After, after that intention was completed, the, uh, the research assistant was blind to which of the four sets had been selected. 
he would then put a fixed amount of water in each of the seeds and then the, the, they would sit for 24 hours and soak. The seeds would then be washed. Then um, they would be planted in a fixed amount of soil with nutrients um, and then a fixed amount of water would be placed on top. All of that would then be encased in a, in a plastic bag so the seeds grew in the dark for five days with no additional water uh, administered. And so there the four pots are. And then at the end of the four days, the seeds would be open five days. You could, you could see now that they're growing, that they have grown. And then each of them would be pulled out and, and measured in terms of millimeters. And that would be recorded. And then it would be put into a spreadsheets and, and ultimately statistically analyzed, analyzed. Of course, it was after this whole process was done that the code would then be broken. We would then be informed which ABCD was the targeted versus non-targeted conditions. There were a total of six experiments. These were opportunistic, meaning we didn't have control. We didn't, we, we didn't select the subjects. We didn't select the timing. They just took advantage of when Lynn was doing one of these workshops. And there was one in Sydney, Australia, with a group size of about 600. Um, and you could see that that audience picked target A. There was an online study that was conducted via London. Then there was one in Rhinebeck, New York, one in Palm Springs. Uh, actually, the Austin, Texas one was actually the sixth experiment, but I listed it in, in order here as the fifth only because I wanted to, to spe especially note that the Hilton Head experiment, of which there were 500 subjects, was actually a, a group of, which was convenient, it was a Healing Touch International uh, meeting of Healing Touch practitioners. So this was a group that we happened to have who were practiced in the art of focusing intention um, and, uh, and healing. And for the six experiments, the total number of seeds or subjects was 1,440 subjects, which is very large for the kind of research that we typically do. This is a summary of the data. Um, and what this curve shows is on the left, where it says intention days, those contain the, the targeted seeds, which, are, it's, which is the blue square, and the non-targeted control seeds, which was the, uh, I guess you'd say that's red, and you can see that there is a, it's much higher in the, for the intended seed than the controls. Then for the non-intention day, which was a, a day which was not blinded, but was also five days of growing of the seeds, but where there was no intention going into the lab, you can see that in both, in both cases, uh, it was lower, and significantly so. In terms of analyses, Separate ANOVAs were conducted on the group intention and non-intention control days for the intention day only, which was the blinded condition. The main effect for target was significant, P less 0.07. For the non-intention day only, the main effects for target was non-significant. In other words, there was no different in the, in the, in the tension versus targeted versus non-targeted when there was no intention given at all. Now, the main effect for intention day Attention day versus the non-attention day was highly significant. That's the two points on the, on the left versus the two points on the right. And separate novas were conducted separately for the target seed and the non-targeted seeds. And you can see that both of those effects were highly statistically significant. So it looked like the possibility that there might be a spread of effect that was occurring where the targeted, even the non-targeted seeds were being accentuated. But of course, you have to remember, that part of the study was not blind, so there are alternative interpretations that, that are open to the data. Now, I said that there were one particular group, which was the um, Healing Touch International group, and I looked at them separately. What's interesting about this group by itself is that, first of all, it showed the largest specificity effect that is the targeted seeds compared to the non-targeted seeds in the intention day. And interestingly, they showed no essentially non-intention day effect comparison to the non-intention day, suggesting that they were showing greater specificity and therefore less spread of effect, which would be consistent with the intention hypothesis. Now, to examine whether the A versus CD targets were possibly different, because obviously it was not a completely randomized order, with an end of six, and over was performed on just the intention sessions, which were blinded, comparing the four experiments with the A targets versus the two experiments with the CD targets. The main effect for target versus non-target, again, was significant, which was not surprising. However, there was no interaction with the target placement, A versus CD, indicating that position did not seem to be a factor in explaining 
uh, the result.